Mercedes fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Travers, stop your engines! <laughs> your hobby to the next level with a quality racing rig that works great with a PS3, Xbox 360, and a PC. DT Omega Racing Simulator is compatible with a wide range of steering wheels including Logitech, Fnatic, Thrustmaster, and more. The GT Omega is available now worldwide by going to www.gtomegaracing.com. Good evening everyone and welcome to week 5 of the iRacing Grand Prix series. This week we are at Autodromo Jose Carlos Pesce and otherwise known as Interlagos. I think we'll stick with Interlagos for today. My name is Lee Thompson and with me this week uh, again in the commentary booth is Ryan Littlemore. Good evening Ryan. Good evening Lee, how are you this evening? I am a lot less rushed than I am sometimes and frankly I'm looking forward to a very exciting race at Interlagos. Should be good. Yeah, it will be. Interlagos is probably one of the most famous tracks on this calendar, and uh, hopefully we can have a good race tonight, early. If we can get through the first lap, Ryan, then I'm sure that will be the case. Um, we're expecting a decent turnout. The session is already up, in fact, so I can have a run through the grid in a moment. We'll have a quick reminder as to the current standings in the Road for Pro Series, and then the race will be ready. We've got around three minutes, two and a half, three minutes until the race will start. So having a quick glance at the grid then, I can already tell you that we've actually got a couple of um, World Championship drivers who have joined us. They're going to be running at Interlagos in two weeks' time after their first race yesterday at uh, spa Francorchamps. So that's going to mix the grid up a little bit. Um, so the grid, P1. We have Rocco Barone. He's got the overall pole position time for the week with a 1 minute 12.064. This is actually the first time that we're going to see Rocco at uh, one of our live stream uh, races. Uh, in P2, we have Oli Pakala, regular. P3, Yuha Abe. P4, we have Isaac Price. P5, we have Calvio Soto. P6, we have Troy Schultz. P7, we have Antoine Higelin. P8, we have Alex Simpson. P9, Marcus, Simps uh, Marcus Caton, sorry. So he's our first of the World Championship drivers. Uh, P10, Samuel De La Ferte. Uh, P11, Jorn Jens. He's not had a great uh, qualifying time this week, but considering he had the overall pole last week at Watkins Glen. Uh, P12, uh, Jan Zalowski. P13, Omar Soto. First time we've seen him in one of our races as well. P14, Michael Goman. Uh, and then we've got P15, Jorni Hagner. After that, we've got three World Championship drivers who haven't set a qualifying time for the week. So we've got Marty Patella, Alexi Yussi, Akalaya. Uh, I missed up the surname, sorry. And uh, in P18, we have uh, Petteri Cotavara. So those are, uh, uh, we're going to see them three charging through the field, no doubt to make their way towards the front. So um, we've got just over a minute now left until the start of the race. Um, just about got time then to run you through the standings that we currently look at as of the end of last week for our Road to Pro. So as of the end of Watkins Glen, uh, for the top 10 drivers looking to get into the Pro Series for next year, we had Jorn Jens in P1, Oli Pekala in P2, 
Piavio Soto in P3, Fabio Di Carmo, who's not in this race, uh, in P4, Alex Simpson P5, Charles Schultz P6, Rocco Baroni P7, Yuhu Abe P8, Samuel uh, Kumo, who's not here either, uh, in P9, and Isaac Price in P10. So those are the, the top guys who we're looking at fighting for those positions. So, um, almost ready for the grid to come up now. Um, there's been a lot of action so far this week in turn one, lap one. So really, we're going to be watching closely to see if we can get through any drama through the first corner. It's a very, very difficult turns one and two for everyone to get through on that first lap. So I really hope that the little bit of experience that most of these guys have gained during the week and the couple of races that they've done is going to make life much easier for them, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, uh, here's a question really. Where, obviously, you've been around the track, I think, a couple of times. Where are we going to see some overtaking uh, places here? <laughs> You're right, I have through just a couple of times. It feels like I've done hundreds and hundreds of laps here this week. This is a, a tough circuit, so uh, we're quite familiar with this circuit from um, previous games, Ryan, on, on consoles and such, and this feels very, very difficult. It's a real challenge, really, really tough track for drivers to get their heads around. In terms of overtakes, we're looking at turn one after the, the massive, massive run up the hill onto the front straight, and we're looking at turn four. Those are our two main opportunities, really, for overtakes after the, the two main straights on the circuit. Yeah, as we can see, the drivers are making their way onto the grid for the start. Yeah, so a few seconds now with everyone gridding up, and um, uh, we're going to be waiting to, to see if we can get through at turn one. Let's hope, let's hope, let's hope Lee, there's going to be no incidents. Hope so. So we've got about half a field on in a minute, so quick reminder as to the, the top few positions on the grid. Uh, we've got Rocco Brown P1, Oli Picala P2, Yuha Abe P3, Isaac Price P4 and Javier Soto P5. So hopefully they all get through the other side. So the revs are already building, waiting for the lights to go green. And we're away. And so it looks like a clean start uh, at the front, at the back there's a little bit of movement already. We're three, four wide in the background, but the leaders look pretty clean, so they should be able to get through into turn one. Oh, we've got contact, contact. back between Troy Schultz and the car just behind. And so already we've had that turn one carnage. I don't know how many cars are involved. Oh, we've got um, some having a bit of contact there. Yeah, but I think a lot, a lot of cars are going to be involved there. We've got a big gap to the leaders. Um, we've already got a battle for uh, the P4 at a minute going into turn four, so they've just managed to straighten themselves out. So Rocco Barone managed to get cleanly through into uh, into the first couple of uh, corners there. Yep. One of the biggest losers out of that suddenly was Alex Simpson, who uh, kind of got caught up in that ill incident and came on board. He has got a tiny bit of damage on his front wing and a bit of suspension, but he's just breezing past these drivers now who have got significant damage, and I'm guessing they will be pitting. Oh, and we can see Alex going a bit wide there, going up turn six and seven, and he's lost a place there. But, um, and, if, and in fact, with the carnage that we had at turn one, I somehow missed that Oli Picala got a great start off the line. So actually, Oli Picala jumped Rocco Barone off the line. So we have Oli Picala P1. I presumed it was uh, Rocco Barone still. Rocco Barone is P2. Yuha Abe P3. Isaac Price P4. And Marty Patella. Wow, Marty Patella came from right at the back of the grid from somewhere like 18th position, and he's in P5. So he got through all that carnage in turn one. So really, you know, a massive, massive shift in this race with that first lap. Unfortunately, you know, just we haven't seen a race this week yet where anybody's uh, been able to make a clean start on that first lap. Yeah, as uh, Alex Simpson is got into the pits, into the pit lane, I wonder if he's going to be um, had to suddenly retire the car. I don't know what the damage is. We've got another two cars coming in as well with him. So we're just going to see if he's going to be uh, retiring. I hope not. We know Alex pretty well. He has been practicing quite a bit this week, or this race in particular, as who is in with him at the minute. So I'll just have a quick look, Lee, while you uh, run through the field. Yeah, so P1s at the moment, yeah, we have Oli Picala, as I said, so Rocco Barone in P2. He's uh, just trying to close back up on Oli Picala. He got a good first uh, lap, did uh, Picala, and really gaps. Rocco Barone a little bit in P2, Uyo Abe in P3, um, Isaac Price in P4, keeping him in close comfort. Marty Patel is a little way back, just sliding out of the, uh, the final turn onto the long, long straight out the bottom of the circuit. Uh, so he's in P5, there's a little bit of a gap uh, to the cars in front and to the cars behind. Yoni Hagner in P6, Michael Goman in P7, Pateri Kosavara in P8, Jorn Jens in P9, and Javier Soto in P10. So that's a real mix from what we saw then on the uh, on the grid. Oh, it is. It's, it, it's just a shame to see 
obviously the incident at turn one, and hope, hopefully most of these drivers will, uh, who are in the pits can hopefully come back out and make a little good little run at the end there. But uh, Michael Goldman, he's in seventh place at the minute. He's uh, battling for sixth place with uh, Hagner here. Oh, he's got a bit wide, and he's lost a position to uh, the number 13 car, as that was at turns number four and five there. So uh, Goldman just went a bit too wide, uh, had a wider entry there, and just got a bit of grass and if you go on the grass uh, Lee in these cars you will lose the back end hopefully not what well, not hopefully but obviously not hit the wall there but yeah and it was a tough ask for, for Michael Goman I mean he, we've seen him in a couple of our races so far this season he's not been at the very top and he had uh, Pateri Cotavara there world championship driver behind him so he was under a lot of pressure and presumably just was pressured into that little mistake So back up the front, we've got Oli Piccala streaking down the, the home straight down into turn one. So Rocco Baroni is keeping him in, in fairly honest. You know, not really managed to gain on him in this last lap since I last was uh, was with him. And, uh, and they've both just gapping a little bit now to P3. Who are they? Gonna have a check and look at the uh, the lap time so far from the leaders, with uh, Oli Piccala still in the lead, I do believe. I'm 100% sure. As he it set up 14.5 that last lap, which is, I don't really know if that's a good time or not, Lee, so you might have to help me on this one. Um, would you say that's a quick time, Lee? <laughs> well, well, yeah, being that he's in the lead, I think we can safely say that that's a quick time, yes. Uh, we expect him probably to go two seconds quicker by the uh, the end of the race, maybe. We might even just dip into the 12s, I would think, very low 13s or high 12s. So they're going to keep burning off that fuel, they're carrying around 75 kilos, something like that at the moment. And that's going to keep uh, making that effect as they head through the race. Yeah, as uh, I just wanted to point out as well, Rocco Baroni is in second with four tenths quick on, on that last lap to uh, the leader as he's at 14.1. So uh, hopefully these two are going to have a nice little battle and hopefully we can get some more of the likes of uh, Isaac Price. He's only three seconds down the road. Um, Hagner as well. The, the top, I would say the top seven are separated, or just in the 10 seconds, please. So. Anything can happen, as we can see the lead gone a bit wide there at turn one in the centre S's, and he's lost a heap a lot of time to uh, Barone there. Yeah, and also we've got Michael Goman losing another place to Jorn Jens as well, so Jorn Jens just slotting in quite nice into turn one with Javier Soto trying to follow suit as well, so that's Michael Goman down another position. We've got little battles going all over the field actually, so Yoni uh, Hagner and Petit Cor Cotavara are battling into turn four here, side by side. Yoni Hagner on the inside, Cotavara on the outside. Cotavara runs wide onto the AstroTurf, really, really slippery out there. And he's just had to slot back in behind Yoni Hagner as they head into the infield now, into the circuit. But he's coming back up the inside, but perhaps just a slightly different line that the two of them are taking there. Just a, just a quick question, Lee. Obviously, obviously, the main straight here is easy for overtaking, but what's the slipstream right, uh, around here? Yeah, it's a good effect. So if you can get a good drive come out of that final corner, then um, you, you're working your way up the hill all the way and that slipstream effect is going to give you plenty of time to have a good chance to have a run into turn one. Turn one braking is so, so tricky as well. So if you can get up alongside, then um, you really one of you is going to need to, to back out of it to not have um, yet another instant into turn one as we've already seen. Nepan Barone has set another 14.1 on that lap and he's took six temps out of Bacana at front. The gap now is just under four temps of a second, so Adi Bacana is going to be a really bit of spot of bother here coming in there. And don't forget third and fourth as well. They've pulled, they're getting closer, let's put it that way, to these two as they're having a good little battle here. So really the top five are separated by just five seconds, Lee. We could be in for a good little race here. Yeah, absolutely. As I say, Barone has really managed to close that gap onto Bacana there. So this is the first time we've seen Pakala under you know, any real sort of pressure in our strength and field races. You know, we've already seen him up there at the front, but it'll be interesting to see how well he can cope with that pressure from behind now. So just have a, just having a quick look at the uh, the field at the moment, just to confirm the few names that it looks like were caught up in that first corner instance. So Alexi, you see Yakola, uh, Antoine Higlin, Omar Soto, Samuel De La Fuerte, uh, Jan Zalowski, Alex Simpson, Troy Schultz. Looks like those are the main drivers, probably Marcus Caton as well, who were all caught up in that turn one instant. Yeah, it is good to see though, the likes of Troy, Alex and uh, Jan back out on track, which is good to see. But sadly, uh, Samuel Omar, Anton Higlin and Alexi have all retired from the race. Yeah, we've got Marty Patella just moving into fourth position as well. So Marty Patella's managed to, uh, to make a place on Isaac Price there going into turn one after that long drive. We'll see if maybe Isaac can get a good run out of the uh, out of turn three there 
see if he can have a little sniff into turn four, but Marty Patella really is going to have the pace on, uh, on Isaac Price. He should be making a, a little bit of a gap to, uh, to the car behind him. Yeah, and at the front, Adi Bakari is the first man to set a time in the 113 so far. It's only lap seven. He did a 13.9, whereas B Barone did a 14.1 again. And the gap has gone up to just under a second now, so at this stage, Bakari uh, has uh, pulled a gap slightly, but don't forget, Barone is very quick around here, as we've seen in practice sessions and qualifying and previous races, so never count any for now. Anything can happen in these races, but uh, down the field, we've got, we've got a little battle going on for sixth place with um, Hagner on the back of Petter, Petter I think it is. I'm not yeah, really it's sure. really, it's, it's Yoni Hagner under pressure from behind from Yon Yen, so that's for P7 and P8. So Cotavara made that position on the previous lap, and now already um, Hagner's been caught very, very quickly by Yon Yen, who we know is, is fast. He's the top standing A class driver at the minute in the series, fighting for the, the pro drive positions. So heading up onto the front straight, we're going to see the slipstream effect that uh, Jorn Jens is going to get on Yoni Hagner. So Yoni Hagner is going to go a little bit defensive, but not particularly just sitting in the middle of a track. Jorn Jens trying to distract him by weaving around into turn one. And Yoni Hagner able to keep that tight line, so he should get a drive now coming out of just turn three onto, uh, onto the back straight. But Jorn Jens is, is keeping close, so he's got a good run coming out of turn three as well. So he may be able to have a little sniff going into turn four. Again, moving around just to try and distract him, but waits for another lap. Got a good little battle going on up the field for, I think it's fourth place with uh, Isaac Price now, right on the back of Marty here, as uh, I think Marty kind of make, was a bit struggling in the first sector around here, and um, Isaac Price was absolutely brilliant for the double right-hander that I saw on the screen, so possibly uh, Isaac Price here is quicker than the two of them, I mean, um, Marty set a 14-2, uh, whereas Isaac Price set a 14.7, so six tenths was the last um, difference was between these two on the previous lap, but Isaac Price has been absolutely quick on this lap, on this lap now. Yeah, so if Isaac Price can just hang with Marty Patella then, then he'll be very happy to get drawn up to the cars in front. Again, I'm watching Yoni Hagner having to defend coming down the front straight to Jorn Jens. Jorn Jens is already looking to go alongside, around the outside as they approach into turn one, so we're going to see how brave Jorn Jens are going to be. Is he going to try and outbreak him around the outside into turn one? He does, he's tried to hang on around the outside, but he just has to back out of it at the end. So if he could have, then he would have had an inside line there for turn two, but it didn't quite work out. He should get a better drive coming out of this corner now as well, as Yoni Hagner had to have taken the, uh, the tight line initially. But again, he's going to have to wait for another lap, even with him distracting him. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, kudos to both the drivers have some good clean action through that turn one. No contact was made. The move was done cleanly, and it's good to see that. I wish it was like that uh, turn one, the, uh, the first lap. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it is a really, really tight first turn, downhill braking, and it's, you know, you can see how everyone was swarming going into that turn one. I was seeing cars three, four wide as they were coming up to turn one, and it's just, it was going to be tough to, to all get through. Yeah, as I'm just on the blimp cam, uh, looking over this amazing track, as we've got Jorn Jens now, he's right on the back of uh, Hagler now, as they're going out of uh, Jorn Kau up the hill here. And uh, just a question, Lee, are we going to see no pit stops again like we've seen so far this season? Yeah, Fraser, so that's really going to be the theme for the whole season, Ryan. No pit stops again. 35 laps, so we've got uh, a yeah, good length of race, but it's not enough of a penalty for us to um, uh, have to you know, pit for carrying that fuel. Oh, as it looks like... Um Jens is going to possibly make a move here into turn four, but he decides to back out of it cleanly, which is fine. And that has given Soto the chance to get back on, on the back of Hagler now, and yeah. Jens coming up the hill towards turn six and seven. Yeah, you can really see this bottleneck that Yoni Hagner is causing. So you know, Yoni Hagner is perhaps a little bit out of position getting through that carnage at turn one. So he's really holding up here. Yeah, uh, Jorn Jens, Javier Soto, who got caught up in that first lap incident. And Michael Goman even is managing to hang on to the back. So we've got a little train of cars now for. Up front, it's stretching out a little bit now. So Oli Picard has managed to make a decent gap on Rocco Barone. He's not really under any pressure from Barone anymore. You are a little bit further back. Marty Patel has not really gained on those cars in front either. So there's a good couple of second gap really between each of them as they're heading through. Isaac Price is trying to hang on to those coattails as Marty Patella. Potavara then uh, is uh, the next car up. Then we have a little train of four cars. and. It doesn't look like Jorn Jens managed to get a great exit coming out onto the back straight there, onto the front straight even. 
Yeah, as um, Troy has, has sadly retired from the race, I'm afraid. I don't know what's happened to him. I'm just watching the replay. I think he might have a bit of damage on the front left suspension, but he's in the pits, he's parked his car, and that's him out. And he's just put in the comments he's going to be another drop round for him. Again, Jornian's trying to distract Jornian Hagner as they go into turn four. So Hagner's doing a good job of just not letting himself get uh, get distracted by Jenza. But saying that, Jenza's got a good exit coming out of that last couple of corners. They try and go around the outside of his fast, fast entrance into the see, into the infield here. And uh, not surprising, he wasn't quite able to make that step. But Javier Soto looking to go up the inside of Jornian's. But again, that was always going to be a bit optimistic. Unless the car in front makes a, a mistake going through this infield section, so really from turn six to turn twelve. There isn't really any overtaking positions, it's just trying to stay tight and close to the car in front and getting prepared then for the good run out of the final, uh, well, what's essentially the final real corner anyway, turn 12. Oh, as Goman has gone a bit wide coming out of uh, Young Cow there, it looked like he was going to make a move, but he is still on the back now, he's in the slipstream. Yeah, and Jornjens has got his best chance now of getting past Jonny Hagner as well, so he's managed to push up the inside of Hagner into turn 1. The move is going to be done even before they get into the corner. So, oh, hanging on side by side. In fact, Hagner done. Goman's going on the outside here. Yeah. No, he's inside the back of it. Fair play, fair play to him. Don't want to make any contact. That would have been a really good move there, but yeah. And Yoni Hagner is trying to come back now at Yoni So Yoni goes very defensive. Oh. Was there a little bit of contact? And oh, oh into the wall. Are the cars behind going to get collected as well? But no, Hagner maybe manages to collect it uh, all together after that. I couldn't quite see from my angle whether there was contact or whether Hagner just panicked a little bit and felt the need to, uh, to um, give himself a little bit more space to Yenzo. I'll have a look back there and uh, let you know what happened there. It looks, from what I saw from the back, that um, I think he went out a bit pulled a bit too early out of the slipstream and he might have put a bit more t t uh, steering lock and uh, oh, it's a real shame that for um, that driver uh, Hagner there. So, he just, he just looked like he just pulled out too early and put a little steering angle and the car just lost the back end. And yeah, absolutely. He definitely didn't look like there was any contact between him. He just, as I said, perhaps uh, ended up getting closer than he expected, closer for comfort. Well, so that's little ba that little battle over now. We're already on lap 13 out of our 35. So again, just have a quick run through the top 10 again, make sure we know where we are. Oli Picala still P1, so he's still got a good couple of second gap to Rocco Barone in P2. Uh, Yuha Arbe in P3. Marty Patella P4. So they've really got a little bit of a gap to the, the rest of the field, otherwise the price is hanging there and there as well in P5. Then we've got a good gap back to Pateri Cotavara in P6, uh, Jorn Jens in P7 after getting finally past Yoni Hagner, uh, Javier Soto in P8, Michael Gohm in P9, and Marcus Caton recovering from that first lap incident in P10. So at the front, um, Lee, do you see Rocco Barone trying to catch up to um, Oli Picano or is it just a one-horse race now? Well, they've both got very similar pace, I think, and we saw Rocco Barone had um, the fastest overall lap for qualifying, so we know he's got the, the outright pace. Arguably, Barone's got a little bit more experience than Oli Picala as well, so it'll be interesting to see if Picala could keep up this pace through the whole race, or whether he ends up making just a couple of little mistakes that could really invite Barone back into uh, to challenging for that position again. So the race has just settled down a little bit now after the, the frantic, frankly, 13 laps that we've had, or 14 laps now that we've had, so I haven't really had a chance to, to pause for the rest of the race, but everyone now has just got himself into that, uh, their correct positions, if you like, and just strung themselves out a little bit more now. Yep, and that crash that happened on a couple of laps ago for Hagner, he has retired with a massive a lot of damage, so that's a real shame for Hagner. He looks really, really, really up there. He could have been fighting for the top, maybe a top four, but... That's, that's what happens in racing. If you want to make an opt, optimune, yeah, optimune, oh, I don't say it, like, on that. When he's trying to make him a good move, and you, you just pull too much steering lock, you'll, you'll lose it, and that's a real shame for him. So, yeah, so we just... Um Watching the leaders at the moment as they're coming through very, very consistently, it looks like, in these last few laps. Interlagos, as I said, is a, is a challenging circuit. It's very, very difficult to be consistent here lap after lap. Um, again, especially into that turn one. I don't think through the whole week that I've been driving, I managed to take turn one, turn two the same in, uh, in any two laps that we've had.
Theoretically, I think the only battle that is really ha happening at the minute is for seventh place with Yon Yen, Doto, and as well Michael Gowen. They are all separate by just five seconds. So, any f these guys could uh, possibly have a good little battle, hopefully. And um, yeah, um, you're gonna take us through a lap early in a bit. Yeah, yes. in a yeah, absolutely. In a moment, Ryan, yeah, we'll, um, we'll come on to that. So this, of course, is the first season that we've been at Interlagos for these guys as well. So the circuit was only released back in uh, in January, I think it was, in fact. So uh, everyone's had a good couple of weeks of practice available here, but it's just, um, you know, it's just getting through that turn one's been tough. The World Championship Series is going to be here next uh, in a couple of weeks as well. So that's why we've seen a couple of those World Championship drivers just sneaking into the field to give themselves a little bit of uh, an eye open as to what they're going to be expecting. Just having a quick look at the uh, lap times early, and um, Barone is on that previous lap was a 13.5, and uh, Bacana in the lead was two attempts faster. So the gap is around about 1.7 seconds now between the two here, as uh, we are slowly approaching half distance already. It's gone very quick already, really, hasn't it? Yeah, it's a short little circuit, of course. You know, so it's only we were looking at 1 minute uh, 13, 1 minute 14 laps, so it is going to go quickly regardless. And for the driver, it's so, so busy the whole lap as well, as we're about to see now, as we go on board with Rocco Barone, as he's trying to chase down Oli Picana. So we're coming down the front straight, flat out, we're into seventh gear now, coming over the slight rise, the slight crest over the start-finish line. Turn one then really drops away from you. Uh, positive camber though, so it tries to hold you to the inside, a little bit wide, a little bit quick into turn two, and then into turn three, bouncing over the curb for Rocco Barone on the inside there. Let it run all the way out to that outside curb as well. And now we're down the second longest straight that we've got, heading towards turn four. You've got your braking marker on the right, cut the kerb on the inside on the left, that astro turf on the far right there is very, very slippery, so just trying to get to the kerb only, no further. Now we're into the tight infield section, down just two gears, try and hit this second apex as tight as you can, and into one of the slowest corners that we've got on the straight. Really cheat across the kerb there. It's great in iRacing, in fact, that you don't get an off track there because. In real life, the F1 cars cheat completely across that same kerb. Now again, down into first gear for this tight, tight right-hander. Don't take as much kerb. Perfectly judged for Rocco Barone there. Just a little bit of the wheel on the kerb there. The rear, you can see, is trying to get away from Barone as he comes through that fast left-hander. Now we're back onto the front straight already. It's important to get the drive out the corner, and you see Barone having to fight with the steering, getting on the power coming out the corner there out of turn 12. And then it's just flat all the way back to the line again. We could, uh, we could really see the elevation changes, of course, in the circuit as well. You know, the whole circuit is built in a in a bowl, uh, a real amphitheater for the for the, uh, for the spectators as well, as they head back down the hill now, back into the uh, into the rest of the lap. So you can really see how much these, the drivers having to work on this uh, circuit. So there's two main areas in here which which they're going to struggle with really. The first one's getting on the power. And the most critical corner to get on the power is out of turn 12 before you come onto that long, long, what's well, essentially a straight, but of course you're going through three corners onto the front straight. Uh, you could really lose a lot, a lot of time if you can get a perfect drive coming out of the corner. And then it's a fast, fast corners as well where the back he likes to be really, really loose, uh, certainly for the quickest guys away, they're going to need to set up the cars. And uh, coming through the exit of turn three, coming through also turn seven and t uh, turn six and turn seven. Um, they're really having to, to fight the rear of the car the whole way around. Yeah, as um, currently um, the battle that I was mentioning earlier, the seventh place with Jens Soto and Michael Goman. Sadly, Goman has slightly pulled back a bit. He's five seconds off um, Soto now, and it's really a two horse race now for seventh place with Jens only about 1.7 seconds ahead of Soto. As hopefully, um, there could be a good little battle going on there. Well, at the front, I think Oli Bacano is going to lap someone. Uh, it's Jan on the um, just before turn four, and he lets him through nicely. But hopefully, um, Jan will let um, Rocco Barone through as well, so he can 
hopefully challenge Oli Bakar for the last uh, 18, yeah. 17 laps to go. And it looks like Zalowski, Jan Zalowski is just blinking a little bit as well, so hopefully he's not going to have any uh, any disruption for the leaders as they come by trying to figure out exactly where he is on the track. So Jorn Jens back in, well we have P7 for Jorn Jens. Um, it's interesting to, you know, to see the difference that we've had this week between um, uh, his running pace that he's got here in Zalagos compared to last week at Watkins Glen where he was really dominant through the whole field at an overall pole position for the week. So, you know, diff very different circuits, uh, different grip levels, but that's quite a significant difference that um, he's experienced in these two weeks. Yeah, I think Barone had a really bad exit coming out of um, Jon Cal there, but um, he's going to get past Jan, I think, again. I'm not 100% sure. Yep, he has. Got through now, and he's now just under two seconds now from Oli Bacana with only uh, 16 laps to go. So, uh, also to mention as well, one person in particular that we have not really mentioned during this race, Lee, is um, the number seven car of um, Yuho Abbey. And he's only about 1.1 seconds behind uh, Barone, so he could be possibly in the hunt for the win here. I mean, he's setting uh, a reasonable pace, he's setting a 1.13.6 on that previous lap. I think it was slightly quicker than um, Barone was, but yeah, it's something we haven't really mentioned, um, Lee, in this race. No, absolutely. And those top three have just dropped a little bit now. I was at Price back in P4, uh, so he's um, you know, was managing to hang on, and he's dropping back into the clutches of Marty Patella, who again, world championship driver, we know is going to be very, very quick. So over the next couple of laps, that could be uh, who we need to be watching, seeing how easily uh, Marty Patella manages to dispatch Isaac Price. So from the 18 runners that we uh, we started with, of course, with the, the carnage that we had in turn one and for the instant that we had for Yoni Hagen, we've only got 12 runners left on the uh, on the circuit now. A couple of them perhaps lapping a little bit slow with damage as well. Marcus Cater and Alex Simpson, I think, both have damage uh, as they're lapping around. So again, now we're on to lap 21 into the, the last third or so of the race again. Quick run through the top 10, should be as we uh, have seen last time around. Oli Picala, currently P1, he's really managing that gap quite nicely to Rocco Barone. I did expect, I did wonder if Barone was going to be able to close and pressure on him, but it's just not happened so far. So, yeah, Rocco Barone in P2. Yuha Arbe in P3, who's actually closer to Barone than, uh, than Barone is to Picala. Uh, we're saying that Isaac Price has just been dropped a little bit now back in P4 with Marty Patella hounding him and, and closing that gap in P5. Terry Cotavara again has closed on both of those cars in front in P6. In Vion Yen's a little further back in P7. Javier Soto P8. Michael Goman in P9. And Marcus Caton, I think, just limping around a little bit perhaps in P10. So as we said, the World Championship Series had their first race of the season yesterday, in fact, and that was a spa function. Oh, just watching, sorry, Oli Picala in turn one there, really losing the rear of the car going through turn one. Very, very easy to do. We said how much of a, a tricky corner that was. He just managed to catch it, just managed to stop it, spitting him into the inside wall, and that would have just lost him a little bit of time to Barone behind. And in fact, Yuha Abe has dropped a long, long way back from Barone now, so Yuha Abe must have had a little bit of an incident on that previous lap as well. Um, and, uh, and that's really given Isaac Price a little bit of a sniff at that P3, maybe. Anyway, I was about to talk about World Championship Series. They just started their first round yesterday at spa Francorchamps, And uh, and first uh, round then, the win went to Hugo Luiz. Um, he's the 2011 World Championship winner. Uh, P2 was Artsy Kirchhoff. And P3 was Gregor Hutu, who was the 2010 and the 2012 World Champion. So, a promising start for um, for the series, and as I said earlier on, they're going to be at Interlagos next week as well. But, uh, Lee, who do you think out of those um, off topic here of the race? Who do you think will probably win out of the? Who are the contenders for that uh, world championship? Well, previous years it's just it's really been between Hugo, uh, Luis, and uh, Gregor Hutu. But this year, you know, Artsy Kirchhoff is right there. We've got a couple of new drivers as well. Richie Stanaway, your real life. Uh, Renault, uh, Renault 3.5 driver. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's some big names that could be up there pressuring, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see if anyone can challenge those those top two drivers who you know they've been the top two for the last for, uh, few years. 
Yeah, as Jan has let Isaac Price through just before turn four, so it's good driving there from Jan. Uh, as uh, Isaac Price is about just around about 2.93 seconds, I think. No, oh, two seconds, sorry. Um, from um, you over here. But um, he's got a bit of bother now with Marty behind him as well. He's only about one a second behind, and he's reaching him at a rate of around about half a second on lap. As uh, Martin was uh, quick on that previous lap, so he could be really on top of Isaac Price here and could possibly be in fourth place here early. Yeah, so that's our, our next potential that I'm expecting is, yeah, Marty Patella creeping up in his last second or so gap now that he's got on Isaac Price. And, yeah, again, as we've seen already with uh, Jorn Jens, if he can get a good run coming out of turn 12, then that's really going to be his main opportunity, uh, diving up the inside into that tricky braking into turn 1. Yeah, I'd probably say as well, just to add this up, that this is probably one of the closest that we've seen regarding uh, the drivers, is it's really the top six are just... Um, only 15 seconds away from each other, so if any one of these drivers, uh, especially the top three, make a mistake, then the guys like Isaac Price and uh, Barty here could possibly jump up, but you never know in these races. We've got round about 11 laps to go uh, in this race, so yeah, we have to keep an eye out for these, and uh, hopefully we have an action-packed end to the race. Yeah, and of course it's a shame because it all could have been so much closer had uh, a number of those cars only managed to get through turn one uh, on that first lap. So Isaac Price, really, um, you're going to start you know, watching Marty Patella closely now in his mirrors. So as he goes through his infield, it's very, very easy just to start pushing too uh, too hard and run too quick into the entry of his corners and just not being able to, to gain those extra little attempts that he's trying to. So uh, it's just trying not to perhaps overdrive the car as he, uh, as he finds his mirrors filling up with Marty Patella behind. As uh, Makano has just crossed the finish line and he's gained another two tenths on uh, Rocco Barone as they've started lap number 25. Whereas uh, third and fourth have just crossed the finish line now and Isaac Price is just half a second ahead of Mar Marty here as they're coming through the center rest is probably the most in one of the most important corners to get right around here in my opinion. You just got to get a very good exit coming onto this back straight now. I mean, it's a very long one in my opinion, but. Um, slipstream here is not really essential, it's not really to get a good overtake, you've got to be right on the back if you want an overtake and you want to overtake the driver in front of you. Yeah, but absolutely, you've got to be a lot, lot closer coming up through there. But this is, yeah, this is as close as we've seen Marty Patella to Isaac Price, so he managed to gain, as you're saying, a, a good little chunk of time on that last lap, and perhaps it was just from where, say, Isaac Price was trying to overdrive this, this infield section. Uh, another good battle going on in, in, on the track is uh, Jorn Jens and Soto. Still battling, they're only about 1.8 seconds between each other. So these, these, this one and also Isaac Price's battle are probably the main ones happening at the minute. Uh, Adi Bakan at the front is about to start uh, lap number 26, and the gap, as we're just waiting for Barone to cross the finish line anytime soon, is 1.9 seconds, really. So, um, it, what do you use your money on at the minute? Do you think? Uh, Bacana has got it in the bag, or has Barone got something out of the hat? Yeah, well, I'm impressed with Bacana so far. You know, he's managed to resist the pressure early on and, and just build and maintain on that gap. So really, Bacana, it's, it's it's for him to lose, isn't it? We've not really seen too many mistakes. You know, I've seen uh, his little moment ahead in turn one and recovered, but uh, but otherwise, you know, there's no reason why not why Bacana can't take the win for the week, and we've seen him right up there in previous weeks as well, of course. So still Isaac Price backing the car in, going into the infield circuit there. Uh, really um, throws the car into the entry and is quite happy it seems having that back sliding around where it really looks from the outside maybe as if he's going too quick in. Perhaps it's, it's um, quite comfortably within his, uh, his area to manage. You see how wide Isaac Price goes into, uh, into turn 12 of the, the entry line. He takes his all four wheels completely off the circuit trying to give himself the widest entry into the corner and the best drive then onto this long, long front straight. Yeah, one person, one driver as well in particular, he is down the field, is Alex Simpson, and I've been watching his lap times a uh, couple of times now, and he is catching up to the back of uh, Marcus uh, Coton in 10th place, and also Michael Goldman. He's pulled about, about, I would say, about five seconds over the course of um, six laps, so... He could, he's only about 17 seconds off um, Marcus and Michael, so uh, Alex could possibly get some 
get into a top 10 hopefully, but he's got to keep this consistent pace going and not get lapped. He's only about, I would say, eight seconds behind, ahead of the leaders, um, as they'll be kicking on to lap number 27, if I'm correct. Three. Yeah, 27, absolutely. So we're on lap 27 a minute, about to start lap 28 in not very long at all. And again, Marty Patella you know, all over the back of ours at Price now as they're coming through this infield circuit again. So it's all about whether Marty Patella can get the best possible exit coming out of Turn 12 to give himself uh, a chance of slingshotting down into uh, into Turn 1. So it looks like he's you know, as close as he's been perhaps coming out of Turn 12. It'd be interesting to see how much of a, a slipstream, how much of a, a gain he can make. Of course, they could have slightly different aero settings as well, so maybe Isaac Price is running a little bit of a lighter rear wing, trying to give himself that straight line speed. And Marta Patella wasn't really able to gain, in fact, particularly down the straight. So um, maybe it was just a, a better exit from Isaac Price, or maybe it is a little bit of a difference in setup there. Yeah, one of the key things around here is setup, and, and he was very, very close. In fact, coming out of the exit of turn three there, so he got a much better exit coming up the inside into turn four. He's going to make the move. Isaac Price isn't going to fight it too hard. See, he's been cut back a little bit coming into turn six and then turn seven. So he's got a tighter line. Is Marty Patella going to stay defensive? Now he's fairly comfortable, but Isaac Price shows his nose up the inside, but wisely just uh, doesn't fight too hard and, and tries now just to stick with Marty Patella and just follow him for as long as he can. So that's Marty Patella up into P4 and Isaac Price down into P5. Yeah, it was a good little move there and as we've said previously, one mistake at the centre rest is and you will probably lose a position as we're going to watch uh, a replay of that overtake now. As, um, yeah, as we said, um, Lee, what's, uh, what's the setup needed for this? Would it be high downforce uh, with, the, with the middle sector or do you need to do a mix of downforce and top speed? Well, you know, in the the overall scheme of things, all of these cars are running high downforce, but within that, there's uh, quite a big variation that people are, are running, mainly with the rear wing again, so front wing is always on max downforce, and then we've seen, you know, big, big differences uh, between people running plus 10 rear wickers, minus 10 rear wickers, and that really then does, as you say, set them up either for that tight infield section or for uh, those two long straights that we've got, and um, you know, a lot, of it, a lot of it is going to come down just to uh, driver style and driver preference and how they feel and, and where they're comfortable. Yeah, uh, just mentioning at the front, uh, Rocco Barone has just lost 1.2 seconds on, in a lap, so he must have made a bad exit out of a corner. Might have it just been cons conserving fuel or even that, but the gap is 3.5 seconds. So I wonder what happened to him. I'll just go have a quick look, Lee. Uh, what happened to him on that last lap there? Oh, Marty Pacella getting very, very sideways coming out of turn 12, really having to, to grab the car by the scruff of its neck and get it back in the direction where he wanted. It wasn't enough to really give Isaac Price a, uh, a look or a sniff, but shows that, that Marty Pacella is having to work very, very hard to run at this pace. Yeah, as um, I'm just watching uh, Rocco Barone's previous lap, and I think he had, he had a sideways moment coming out of turn 2 and 3. Just got a bit of curb and just lost the back end. Luckily, he didn't crash into the wall. So, yeah, I mean, Barone re really did a, he did a 115 flat on that last lap lead, though. So, yeah. I think that is Barone's end of the race. He's not really going to catch up to Oli Bacana now, and um, we've only eight laps to go. So, it's Bacana's, in my opinion, it's his race to win or lose now. Yeah, you're not wrong. And Isaac Price is just managing to hold on to the back of Marty Patella. Actually, he's not been dropped too quickly and needs to hold on to the back of Marty Patella because actually uh, Marty Patella's teammate, Petty, uh, Petteri Cotavara, is uh, is you know not that far behind either. So if Isaac Price starts dropping back, he's going to have yet another uh, Azira card to have to deal with. But uh, I can tell you what, Barone, after that uh, little drifting session out of turn three on the previous lap, he's not giving up the fight. He just took three temps out of Bacana on that lap. It was a 113.2 for Barone, and he's only 3.1 behind. So it's not over yet. Five laps to go. But he needs to keep this consistent pace going and try and get in the one tw high 112s if possible, if he's going to stand any chance. But... Um, other notable place battles going on down the field. Yorn and Sosa again still 
1.8 seconds between them. It's been consistent like that for the previous five laps. Um, Michael Goeman and Marcus Keaton uh, in ninth and tenth. They've kind of, it's gone to six seconds now. Uh, Alex Simpson is only now 13 seconds from Marcus now in tenth place. So I think he's just pulled two seconds on that previous lap to Marcus. So with uh, Alex could possibly he's not been lapped yet, which is pretty good to see for um, Alex as he did have that incident at turn one. We would have thought his race would be over and he would have a bit of damage, but Alex could still get in the top ten lead. He keeps his pace up. Yeah, it could do, absolutely. Um, I think for Alex, you know, it's not gonna if he does get a top ten position, it's not gonna help his points for the week, so he is gonna be focusing on just making sure he's just getting clean laps in, not getting silly little off tracks and, and uh, dropping his safety rating down and just make sure he uh, he just finishes his instant free for the rest of the race. He's not there. Uh, be pushing excessively hard trying to get those last positions or two. So yeah, so uh, Pateri Cotavara it has uh, gained now on Isaac Price. So as I had suggested, Isaac Price needed to try and, and hang on to those coattails with Marty Patella in front. He's not really managed to do it. So now that's um, you know who he's going to be watching. He's not going to be watching the car in front so much anymore. He's going to be uh, keeping an eye in, uh, in that car in his mirrors. So we've just got three laps to go now, and it's just going to be seeing if he can uh, keep it nice and clean and, and keep that space. Yeah, as uh, Oliver Price is just watching him on the blimp camera coming up the hill out of uh, Young Cow on that last lap. He is the first one in the 112s, the 112.9. He is really pushing this car to the limit as he pulled two tenths of lappers. He's just about to cross the finish line. So at lap number 33, it's a 113.1, uh, but he's, he's, it was equal. Oh, no, he's not. He's pulled seven tenths on uh, Barone there. So Barone, again, might have made a mistake on that lap. I don't know where, but... You're only, I think it's about three laps to go, Lee. Um, do you think Brown's not really going to catch up now? He's got to gain a second on a lap now if he's going to have any chance of winning. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're, uh, you know, we're just looking to see if they, that top three positions can just bring it home nice and safe. Yeah, we're right on the, the mark that I was uh, looking at for, for the lap times. They're running low 13s, going to be maybe just scraping into the high 12s by the very last lap. So they're, yeah, they're running at quick paces, which... Um, yeah, they've got to be doing at this level of uh, level of competition. So Marty Pacella again in the last lap um, has uh, has gapped out Isaac Price that little bit more, and so Petty Cotavara, uh, Petteri Cotavara, sorry, is um, is really closing eyes at Price. So you know his last couple of laps, he's got to keep pushing if he wants that position. And um, you know, again, we know he should have the pace, world championship driver, and we'll see if Isaac Price can cope with that that pressure. Uh, they're both taking that wide, wide entry into turn 12. So when Marty Patella was following Isaac Price, he wasn't picking up on that, on the fact that he could you know, maybe take that wider line and that was going to give him that better exit. But uh, Cotavara certainly is. Yeah, as uh, I wonder if the cameraman can go to seventh place. The battle there is really hotting up now. As uh, Soto and Jens, the gap is now, I believe, is under a second. So... This is going to be very interesting, these last two laps of the race, uh, as Jens has got the upper hand at the minute. He's uh, setting reasonable lap times, he's set a 13.5 on that previous lap, as uh, I'm just going to see how um, Soto did on that last lap, as I believe he set, he set a 13.4, so he gained a tenth on that, the gap is eight tenths of a second, as they're coming down this, uh, the back straight here. And uh, Jens has just got to keep doing what he's doing. He's just got to get that line, all the lines perfect, no mistakes. And he could possibly keep seventh place with uh, two laps to go. Yeah, Swally Piccolo is now coming up to the start finish line to start his very final lap, lap 35. And he just needs to you know, keep his concentration, just not have any dramas into turn one here. Yeah, it looks nice and neat and tidy, and just keep a nice clean lap. He knows he can afford to lose a couple of attempts here and there and not have to worry about the cars behind. Otherwise, it doesn't look like uh, Pateri Cotavara is going to be close enough in this very last lap to be able to make a move on Isaac Price. And then behind, it's probably going to be the same then for Jorn Jens and Javier Soto. Soto definitely has been gaining those last couple of laps, but again, if Jorn Jens just gets a clean final lap, then it's really going to be done and dusted from there. So we had a, a crazy first 13 laps, I think it was, and then really since then it's maybe just settled down a little bit more. Say it's again, it's a shame we lost that number of drivers in that first uh, first lap, first corner instant to um, 
maybe just sterilize the race a little bit from there. I don't know, Jorn Jens is, uh, uh, yeah, Jorn Jens is really under pressure now, as uh, he had a really bad exit out of the Santa Resses, and uh, Soto got a really good slipstream coming out of that uh, Santa Resses as he's coming, as they're both coming through the double right-hander now, as uh, I believe uh, Lee Oli Bacano is coming around the final corner. Indeed he is, so that's win number one for what we've uh, been watching Oli Bacano on our strength of field races, so great job for Oli Bacano, you can see how happy he is weaving around there, Rocco Brown P2, he seems quite happy with himself as well with Yuharbe P3. So that was the podium sorted. Marty Patella did bring home point four. Isaac Price held on to P5 with Cotavara close behind then in P6. And as I said, Jornians is going to hang on to that P7 as they climb up the hill. The Soto, yeah, closer, but he wasn't able to make enough of a challenge in that final lap. So that would be Jornians in P7, Javier Soto in P8. Michael Goman, he's going to be coming through in a, another 20 seconds or so over the start finish line, P9. He'll be quite happy with that. You know, he's, he's perhaps not quite, quite the pace of those cars in front, so he'll be pleased, I suspect, to, to be in that P9. Marcus Caton then is currently in P10 of Alex Simpson, close behind in P11. I think perhaps Ooh, and Marcus Caton maybe even decide to, to let Alex through and take those extra couple of points, maybe, because he's not going yeah. to be bothered with... Uh, him being a world championship driver, You're right so right Lee, as Alex is go. going to overtake him there, and uh, coming just before, just noticed as well, Alex through turn 11, he lost it completely, uh, did a drift there, but yeah, Marcus I think did let him through, and I'm just going to check the result. Yep, he's let him through, and he's up to 10th place. But I have to give credit to Alex there, to be theoretically nearly a lap down, to come up to 10th place is pretty good. So I I give him credit for that. So well done to um, Alex Simpson there. Yeah, so that was a you know a, a great exciting first half of the race. Not quite so much in the second half maybe, but yeah, Oli Picala picking up his uh, yeah that great win. And uh, right on cue then, Oli Picala has appeared in our commentary channel. So evening, Oli. Congratulations on the, on the win. Ooh, what a race! Thank you, thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> All the adrenaline oozing back out of you now that you've uh, you finished and you can relax again. So how um, how was the the race for you then, uh, Ollie? How did you find uh, jumping Rocco Barone at the start, especially? Uh, I really don't know. <laughs> you know, at the start I had some difficult times. I made few mistakes in the start, and I think in the beginning of the ten laps, and uh, Rocco just came near and near. And I managed to kept him away by making a few good laps. And then was it around lap 20, Rocco made a big mistake in the turn one, and the gap drove was the, was it over three seconds. So I was relieved relieved that I could drive pretty easily after that. So, but what a race! <laughs> yeah, having to make sure you keep your concentration the whole race through. How have you? Uh, you've obviously had. A you know, good time at Interlagos here this week. You know how uh, how tricky have you found uh, found it compared to everybody else? I mean, Turn One has had a lot, a lot of talk, not just for the starts, but just for the difficulty of, of get, getting around the same way lap after lap. Yeah, it's it's very difficult, and this track I like it especially because this is so far uh, one of the hardest, diffi most difficult track I've driven in this season. This needs concentration a lot, and I mean every corner. You have to concentrate and feel the car, and if you don't trust the car, you will end up in the wall. This is very hard track, but it's very great, that's why. Oh, so, yeah, no, yeah. great. So it's needed like many, many hundreds of practice laps that I could manage to keep the pace the whole, whole races. Yeah, and the fact that you enjoy being here is really shown in with your pace as well. Uh, when we spoke to you last time, uh, Ollie, I remember once you had uh, had left the channel, I was then asking, I think it was Dean who was in the booth that, uh, that night, whether you would you know, be able to maintain this pace now that the, the World Championship is starting and, and the assistance you're getting from those World Championship drivers perhaps would dwindle slightly well. I think you've answered that quite happily with your, your very competent and, uh, and clean win that you've had tonight. So, very well done again. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I must say, I dedicate this win to my father. He has a birthday today, so happy birthday, father. And greetings to my uh, godson. And uh, I must say that thanks for Club Finland team speak through all every guy in there. Thank you. 
you you guys make this enjoyable this uh, race. Well, I just wanted to say uh, the um, on behalf of our TV, we'd like to wish Ollie's dad a happy birthday today. And yeah. um, we hope to see you next week, Ollie, at Suzuka. How are you feeling for that track? Yeah, I like the Suzuka, and uh, luckily I got a new PC next week because now I'm driving with my old laptop, so I will be enjoying, enjoying Suzuka even more than Interlagos, I think so. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Ollie, for joining us. And as Ryan says, we shall see you again next week, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. That's for sure. And thank you guys for the stream. Thank you. You're no welcome. At all, mate. Well done again. Bye bye. Well done, So whilst we've been speaking to Ollie, then we've been seeing the replays going through of that turn one carnage that we had, and it's a real shame, you know, a lot, a lot of cars getting caught up in there again, as um, as we saw at the start. Yeah, because we've got a couple of people ready to come up. We've got uh, Anton Hicklin and um, on cue, uh, Lee, I'd like to introduce him. Yeah, good evening, uh, Cotavara, Pateri Cotavara. How was, uh, how did you find your race this evening? Hi. Uh... I found it pretty interesting because there was a lot of cars flying in the turn one and Ernesto was spotting me, thank you Ernesto, and he just called that slow down, slow down, and I slowed down and avoided the huge wreck there. So yeah, so you did extremely well then to get from stone last in the grid, P18, through to you were running what, P6, P7 in at the end of that very first lap. Uh, I think I think I was P8 after first lap and then P6 and I couldn't go any faster than that and maybe the laps the race finished too early because I was just about to catch Isaac Price. Yeah, absolutely. We can see Isaac getting under more and more pressure from yourself during uh, during those closing laps. I haven't had a chance to watch the stream fully myself from your race yesterday, uh, Terry. How how did you get on at Spa yesterday in the World Championship Series? Uh, I wouldn't want to talk about it because <laughs> <laughs> I caused the wreck at the first turn. And as we've seen today at uh, Interlagos, that's going to be very, very easily done. Uh, La Source is just yeah. as, as tough a first turn as, as here at Interlagos. So, um, so good preparation for you for uh, your next World Championship race then, which is at Interlagos. So that's going to be in two weeks' time, Pesari? Yeah, for sure. I did some laps today and got some idea that it would be nice to race and have a little bit longer stint practice with other cars around practicing in dirty air and maybe overtaking and it quite worked out so you have so as a result of the race today then have you can you see any major changes that you may make maybe to your setup or to your strategy for uh, for two weeks time mm, strategy will be same but i think the setup will change dramatically because I found it very understeery. At the first laps, I struggled to get consistent laps, but in the end, it was pretty good because the tire wear wasn't much, and the rears kept uh, didn't spin at all. And so maybe some changes. It's very early to speak about the setup as there is two weeks left for that race. Yeah, a long time to prepare. Well, so the balance here does seem to be the key as it shifts through the race. So, um, so excellent. So good, uh, good first race for you for the for Interlagos. Um, no doubt we'll catch you then in uh, two weeks when we see you in the, the World Championship Series. Well done today. Yeah, thank you and thank you to the ARL team for this broadcast. It's yeah. nice to see this. You are very welcome. Thank no you very much for joining us. Me. And of course, if you're in a, an A-class race again, pop up and say hello again. Yeah, thank you. And see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, mate. Okay, so I think that's going to be us looking to a wrap of interviews. So congratulations again to Oli Piccala with his uh, win that we saw from there. Pretty dominant that he had through the race.
Uh, so of course, before we go, we need to thank GT Omega Racing, uh, our main sponsor. Thank you very much for providing the uh, the prizes that we run for our couple of series. So our GP260 series based on the Star Mazda and our V8 supercars that we run each week. So they're of great help along some sponsors to the ARL. Uh, we've got Sim News Daily. I need to go and check out their site to keep up on any regular happenings within the sim racing world. Various developments, of course, at the minute with lots of other games, Assetto Corsa and similar. Uh, the ARL, so for providing the means for us to do the broadcast and for, uh, for the hosting of, again, a series that we put on. And, of course, don't forget, as normal, you can find us on uh, Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, check out our YouTube channel if you missed any previous live streams as well. This race will be going up shortly after we finish. And, um, and yeah, good good race from Interlagos. Again, it was a shame it was spoiled slightly from that very first lap run. Yeah, I mean, it is, and it is expected, because Turn 1, as we've heard from the drivers tonight, it is very difficult to get right, but apart from that, it's been a pretty good race, and um, had good little battles going through the field, and which is good to see, if it's up with the top five, or even in the lower end, so, yeah, it was a pretty good race, Lee, but um, the question for you is, who was your driver of the day? Well, I'm going <laughs> to... I think each time I've been asked the question, I have gone for the winner, but it's got, you've got to be Oli Pekala. I mean, so he's really taken a, a big, big step this season, and even in the last couple of weeks, it feels like he's taken a, a strong step forward as well. So take uh, take the win in you know, what's arguably going to be the strongest field that you would see all week in our you know, broadcast strength field race, um, and the, the driver names that he had behind us. I think that was a great, great result from Oli Pekala, so he's got to be my driver of the day. Yeah, I do have to agree with you as well. Oli Pekala... That's my drive of the day. He, just, he was just consistent throughout the whole race. Didn't make any mistakes, apart from the one which we saw at turn one. But he, I think he was the fastest man of anyone throughout the whole race. Just kept it nice and smoothly. A win for him. And yeah, he's my drive of the day, Lee. Well, as you said earlier on then, Ryan, we're going to be at Suzuka next week. So same time, same place. So Sunday evening, 6 o'clock, Suzuka International Circuit. Uh, that's going to be a real challenge and again I think we can expect a little bit of fireworks going into turn one and turn two just as we see in in, uh, in real Formula One year after year so uh, thank you uh, uh, Ryan for keeping me company again with uh, with Dean being uh, a little bit poorly again this week yet again and uh, and we shall catch everybody next week thanks yep. a lot bye bye take care guys Take your hobby to the next level with a quality racing rig that works great with a PS3, Xbox 360, and a PC. DT Omega Racing Simulator is compatible with a wide range of steering wheels including Logitech, Fnatic, Thrustmaster, and more. The DT Omega is available now worldwide by going to www.gtomegaracing.com.